Ah, the hockey rink. The cathedral of all hockey players. And our home for the next nine months. Hey everybody, I'm Alex Curious, Director of Communications for the North American Hockey League, and we want to welcome you to this week's show. We know it's going to be a good time, and we know that all NAHL clubs have been busy throughout the summer, and they were happy to get the season going. We are coming off truly a golden year in the NAHL. 221 NCAA commitments blowing the old record way out of the water. One million fans for the fourth straight year through the turnstiles. So right now you could say it is a golden era of NAHL hockey. What do we hope to accomplish in this show? Well, it's simple. We want to bring you inside our world. We want to sit down with NAHL coaches. We're going to sit down with NAHL players. We'll also have a conversation or two with NAHL staff. We'll take a look at the events that are happening and happenings all throughout the league, including games, community events, and other special things going on with the NAHL. It is all going to be a part of a great show, and we're happy to have it with you this year. So sit down, relax, maybe even get a drink, because here comes Inside the NAHL. the NAHL is on the air. What you're looking at right now is the NAHL offices. No doubt it's a busy place this time of year with 78 teams in our three leagues, the NAHL, the NAPHL, and the NA3HL. All three have their regular seasons in full swing right now and it's an exciting time to be a part of the league. Of course you can check things out on NAHL.com NA3HL.com as well as NAPHL.com. We're coming off a record-breaking NAHL showcase and first and foremost we want to thank all of the fans who came out to the event, record-breaking attendance this year, as well as all the NCAA, NHL and Junior Hockey Scouts. 352 Scouts attended the showcase this year and our tip of the cap to all those guys that came out this year, no doubt they saw some great hockey. Congratulations also to the Austin Bruins, the 2014 
NAHL Showcase champions. Also a special shout out to the Topeka Roadrunners who also went undefeated at the event. Coming off the event, we have seen a number of NCAA commitments made by NAHL players and no doubt that number will rise. To pull off such an event like this takes a lot of hard work, but first and foremost, the staff of the Schwann Super Rink in Blaine, Minnesota, led by General Manager Pete Carlson. Pete was nice enough to sit down with NAHL TV while we are in Blaine, and here's a look at that interview with General Manager Pete Carlson from the Schwann Super Rink. All right, Pete, thanks for joining us. Uh, first wanted to ask you uh, what this event means to the Schwann Super Rink and uh, uh, why you like the NAHL coming back every year. Well, this event, uh, actually it's the largest event that the Schwann Super Rink hosts out of the entire year. Uh, to have this many teams coming from across the country, having the scouts that this event brings to Blaine, Minnesota, the Twin Cities, it's fantastic. So. Uh, it's just, uh, and it's our 12th year that you have brought this to the facility. So it's, uh, it's something that we look forward to every single year. And it's so nice to have eight rinks going, all the people, all the fans, all the buses coming in. It's just uh, it's a very exciting week for us. How far do you prepare out for an event like this, knowing that there's 80 teams in, in three rinks over five days? Yeah, you know, it's something that we have to be prepared for, and it's things that you don't really think about. I mean, everything from making sure the rink is clean and, and uh, ready to go, but, you know, we have to bring our ice thickness up for this event. We've got a lot of big guys out there skating, and uh, so we bring our ice thickness up so we can shave the ice down and give them a quality product. You know, it really is. It's about the kids having a good uh, product, letting them showcase their talents. And we don't want the ice conditions to, be, to uh, play anything negative towards that. So uh, our guys work around the clock behind the scenes to make sure that happens. You've been around the NAHL a long time. Uh, as you've seen it progress, what do you think are some of the highlights about the league? Well, I just can't believe uh, the recognition and the uh, looks that these kids are getting at every single level. So whether it's Division Three college, of course there's the D1 guys, the USHL is here, and all the uh, other paid leagues to play in. But there's NHL guys here from all over. I think every team that I see walking around the Schwann Super Inc., uh, sorry, the coach that I'm seeing, every team is represented here from the NHL. So that's kind of a neat thing. And then just to see the, the families coming and watching their kids play and knowing there's a, still a chance for these boys to advance in what they love to do. It's just, it's awesome. And finally, uh, what, what do you feel this does uh, to the local economy? Oh my gosh, you know, it's, uh, it's fantastic. That's why the National Sports Center exists. You know, we're really a tourism business through amateur sports. And uh, an event like this, I mean, to tell you the truth, um, we'd like to have about four or five of these a year. And I know you run those across the country and you have to spread them out. We're lucky enough to have two of them because you're coming back in December with the uh, younger kids. But it's, uh, it's definitely a boost to Minnesota economy. Uh, we want to try to be a, uh, uh, a good partner with the NAHL and, and, uh, because we know that. And that's why we're here is to, to support local business. Well, Pete Carlson, thanks, thanks for all you do for the NAHL, and uh, we'll see you in December. Thank you. Hey, welcome back fans. I'm Alex Curious. This is Inside the NHL. It's time for a new segment here on the show, something that we like to call the whiteboard. Take a look at what's happening in the NHL, and this week we take a look at the current standings, first for the Central and Midwest Divisions. In the Central Division, things could not be tighter. The Austin Bruins are on top with 16 points, and right behind them, the Minot Minotauros, 15 points. Just a point behind Minot, Aberdeen with 14 points, Bismarck with 12 points, and Brookings is at 11 points there in fifth place. That is a look at the Central Division. Next up in the Midwest Division, on top we have the defending Robertson Cup champion Fairbanks Ice Dogs with 17 points, a tie for second place between the two Minnesota teams, the Magicians with 14 points, the Wilderness with 14 points. In fourth place are the Cooley Region Chill with 12 points. And finally, in fifth place, the Kenai River Brown Bears with 10 points. That is a look at your Central and Midwest Divisions. Hey, welcome back to the whiteboard. Now we have a look at the North and the South Divisions. 
First of all, leading the North Division are the Janesville Jets with 15 points, and then it gets real tight right below them. In second place, a point back, the Sioux Eagles with 14 points. In third place, the Keystone Ice Miners with 13 points, and right behind them, the Michigan Warriors with 12 points. In a tie for fifth place are the Johnstown Tomahawks with 8 points, and Springfield with 8 points. Look out for this Johnstown Keystone matchup. It's a matchup of Pennsylvania and Johnstown's home opener. Here in the South Division, we have the Topeka Roadrunners, who have the best record in the NAHL. They are atop with 23 points, 7 ahead of 2nd place Wichita Falls, who have 16 points. In 3rd place, the Corpus Christi Ice Rays with 15 points. In 4th place, the Lone Star Brahmas with 13 points. In 5th place, the Rio Grande Valley Killer Bees with 11 points and a log gem here and a tie for sixth place, all with eight points, the Odessa Jackalopes, the Wenatchee Wild, and the Amarillo Bulls. And that's a look at your North and South Divisions. Lastly on the whiteboard, we take a look at the Players of the Month for September. What a performance by these three individuals. First off, at forward, from the Odessa Jackalopes, Kenny Housinger. Kenny led the NAHL in points during the month 13 points. Can you believe that the Odessa Jackalopes have the top two scorers in the league in the month of September? Kenny was one of them, so congratulations to him. Our defenseman of the month from the Kenai River Brown Bears, Tyler Andrews. Not only did he lead all defensemen in the NAHL in scoring with nine points, but he also led his team in scoring in the month of September. Finally, our goalie of the month, a rookie, Austin Shaw from the Wichita Falls Wildcats. What a debut at the NAHL Showcase. Had the scouts buzzing. In September, a 1.00 goals against average and a save percentage of 96.6%. Fantastic effort by these three in the month of September. We also want to thank Easton Hockey and Vaughn for sponsoring these awards. And that's a look at the NAHL Whiteboard. Hey, welcome back to Inside the NHL. I'm Alex Curious. Right now, I'm in the offices of the NHL's Dallas Stars. They were one of 30 teams this summer at the 2014 NHL Draft. One of the men there, former NHL Coach of the Year, John Cooper, who currently is the head coach of the NHL's Tampa Bay Lightning. John was nice enough to sit down with us while we were at the draft, so here's a look at that interview with former NAHL Coach of the Year, John Cooper. Six years ago, you're in the NHL, and fast forward six years to, to this point in this season, what kind of experience has that been for you personally? Oh gosh, it's been, uh, it's been quite a ride because since that time, it, it, it's been a lot of sacrifice. You, everybody just kind of looks at you and you think about, well, what my wife's gone through and our kids and stuff like that. But uh, the glory days in St. Louis and North American League. Uh, some of the happiest times I ever had in coaching. But since then, it was Green Bay for two seasons, Norfolk for two seasons, Syracuse for a season, and then down to Tampa. And in that short time, uh, it's, it's just been an unbelievable ride. Uh, but my roots started the North American League. Uh, really, when I went down and uh, chose coaching as a profession, when I, I, I stopped being uh, practicing law in Michigan, and I spent five years in the North American League, and, and uh, phenomenal experience. And to, to be honest, probably not standing here today without having to climb the ladder like I did and all started the North American League. And also, a little help from this guy right here, too. <laughs> Talk about the experience of of um, having Ben Bishop on your team and rewind the clock eight, nine years ago and and, and for a, a solid year there, he was a guy that, that you know, you were competing against while you were at Texarkana and, and now, you know, he, he 
was one of your main components of the reason you guys were successful this year. If you really think about kind of the North American League roots, Ben Bishop was a mainstay in, in, uh, in the league, and uh, he goes on has an unreal career in Maine, and now every we circle back, and all of a sudden we're in the National Hockey League, and, and we're together. When you look at, uh, we had Matt Taramina, who was a Rookie of the Year uh, for, for for us in the North American League, and, and he ends up playing a couple games for me here with the Tampa Bay Lightning. So uh, it, it's funny because we have a kind of a couple private laughs about uh, where we all started and how, how things have gone, but uh, you kind of can see back then the talent those kids had and how they excelled in the league, and uh, tribute to them. They, Knowing what you know now and where you are, why do you think that players from the NHL uh, are as successful as they are? Uh, obviously, the, the USHL has a, a tremendous track record when it comes to draft picks, but the NHL, in regards to kids entering the league, earning a college commitment, and then working and working their way up to the point where some of them do make the NHL, why do you think the league has been so successful in that aspect? Well, I, I think really it starts, you got to give a lot of credit to Mark Frankenfeld. Uh, he's, with all the transitions in junior hockey the last 10 years, I think he's been the catalyst and kept everything together and, and, and made the league prosper. And so when you have that type of leadership, I think it all trickles down. And, uh, people progress at different rates. And you've got everybody... Not one league can house every single hockey player you know, in the United States and Canada. And guys go play in different places and they progress at different rates. And North American League is one of those places where kids go to develop and eventually get college scholarships. And the, the, the great ones end up playing pro hockey and some eventually play in the NHL. And it kind of trickles down from there. But uh, as I said, somebody's got to start somewhere. I started there. Uh, ben Bishop started there. Matt Taramian started there. And countless others have played in the league. And uh, it's a true, as I said, leadership all the way down and the great coaches that have kind of started their careers there and moved on. The last guy I wanted to ask you about is Pat Maroon. Um, was very successful this year, very successful uh, in the playoffs uh, for the Anaheim Ducks. Talk about when you got him and, and what type of player he was and, and, and what he is now in that progression because he's a former league MVP. Well, what I, I think about Pat Maroon, this is the perfect example of um, everybody finds a league and to develop in. And, and uh, Pat was one of those kids that went through a growth spurt. He was probably you know, he was still kind of coming into his body, and he hadn't found all and prospered all his potential yet. He did that in the North American League. He spent a couple of years there. Um, one, you know, we had, we had won a championship with him. He was a pivotal piece in that operation, and then eventually had to go on to different leagues uh, where you know, he was going to be challenged a little bit more, and that happens. Uh, but his two years, he probably be the first guy to tell you, like his two years in North American League, he kind of slowly started a boy and left kind of a man. And look at him now; he's watching him on TV every night. Thanks. Hey, welcome back again. We want to thank John Cooper for taking the time during the NHL draft to sit down with us, and we certainly wish he and the Tampa Bay Lightning the best of luck throughout the 2014-15 season. We are fortunate enough now to sit down with NHL Commissioner Mark Frankenfeld, and here's a look at that interview on Inside the NHL. All right, Mark, thank you for sitting down with us. Our first question for you today is, Currently, the league is going through what can be described as a golden era in NAHL history. There was a record number of commitments, record attendance, and for a number of years now, there's been 24 teams, which shows a sign of consistency. In your mind, what are some of the reasons behind these? Alex, thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, I'd like, to point, uh, I'd like to point back credit to our owners. Uh, we've got some fantastic owners, and over the course of the last six or eight years, we've taken advantage of some opportunities to expand into more sophisticated markets and markets that have a better chance of sustaining the model. And through that, our owners and our coaches um, have created a great product in those communities. Communities have bought in, product's been better, 
attracting better hockey players, and uh, you put that all together, that equals the, uh, the, the, the increased attendance, the increased number of commitments, and the sustainability of the NHL model in these junior markets. Mark, there's been a lot of success and growth in the NAPHL and NA3HL in recent seasons. You yourself are a hockey parent. So speaking as a hockey parent, why are some of those options the best for younger players? Well, the, the NAPHL and the NA3HL are, are simply put premium products. The leagues are run by, is run by the North American Hockey League. Um, it gets uh, serviced by everyone in our staff um, you know, with the mission to, to educate and provide opportunity. But you know, as a, as a parent, I want to I be involved with a, with a premium product that has quality coaches, and has the opportunity for advancement. And, you know, just in the, one of the main role that I see the North American Hockey League having in this whole project, uh, involvement with the North American 3 and the North American PHL, is the education process. And so every player and, and every one of those leagues will get a chance to sit down in front of us and we educate them on NCAA compliance items. Uh, those are changing every, every year. You gotta be on top of those things. You gotta get out in front of those things early. We're educating them on player safety issues, concussions, uh, contact to the head, unwanted, unnecessary behavior, how that's moving away from the game at a very, very rapid rate. And also on how, uh, and also educate them on recruiting, uh, things that are important to be seen, way to communicate with junior coaches, way to communicate with college coaches, all those types of things that provide uh, another level of opportunity for players that are in the North American Three Hockey League and North American Prospects Hockey League uh, than any other league in the country. Mark, uh, some people may or may not know that the league headquarters are located in Frisco, Texas, uh, a Dallas suburb. How did it get here? What's some of the history behind the league and its headquarters uh, being in the space it is now? Yeah, Alex, that's a good question. Obviously, the league uh, started in uh, Michigan, you know, 39 you know years ago, and uh, you know, just with the evolution of the uh, opportunities in the markets in the South back in 2004. Uh, during a lockout year in the NHL, there was an opportunity to relocate the offices to Frisco, Texas, and also into the uh, Dr. Pepper Arena or the Dallas Stars Executive Suites here in, in Frisco. And so we've been headquartered down in uh, Frisco, Texas ever since, and uh, we office out of the uh, Dr. Pepper Star Center here uh, right next door to the Dallas Stars. So it's been, a, it's been a really good home for the North American Hockey League. And what are some of the benefits of Frisco for, for somebody who's not familiar with the area? Well, Frisco's a, a fantastic area, but more so probably at this point with the league being uh, geographically um, uh, located as it is, uh, there are very many places that we can't get to um, on, a, on, a, on a direct flight. And so not only being on the ground where we can reach uh, all of the South teams and, and, and a few others, but getting to some of the areas that uh, are maybe difficult uh, to get to than other areas, we can get there pretty much direct. Um, great corporate down here, great community, um, great place, uh, great place to, to be in business, and uh, uh, and we enjoy it down here very much. Mark, uh, again, thank you for joining us on Inside the NHL. We have one last question for you: What improvements, if any, would you make to the junior game to make it better? Thanks, Alex. I think um, I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of the junior game that works really well right now. Uh, I think uh, we've seen over the last few years this national push um, on player safety and awareness. And you know, history be told, the North American Hockey League uh, has always been one of the safest junior leagues to play in um, in the country. Um, that being said, uh, we're trying to keep right up on the forefront of that player safety initiative. We take the safety of our players very seriously. And um, we've since uh, initiated a player safety code of conduct, which passes a lot of information and awareness onto the player. It's designed to get rid of unwanted, unnecessary behavior, repeat offenders, uh, that type of stuff that doesn't belong in the game. In addition to that, we recently hired um, Mark Fawcett, a 17-year veteran NHL official, to uh, head our department of player safety, um, which makes us the only league that I'm aware of that has a department. Uh, specifically for player safety and awareness. Perfect. Well, that's going to do it for me. I want to thank everybody for watching this debut edition of Inside the NHL. Secondly, we want to thank all of our guests 
from Pete Carlson to John Cooper to Mark Frankenfeld and everyone else who made this happen. We thank you for coming by and hope to see you next time on Inside the NHL. Have a great night.